What's going on everybody today? I'm going to go through a quick video on uh, a few basic functions inside of the Python pandas package. Uh, it's going to be very similar to the video I made on data wrangling using R as tidyverse. I'm going to be doing things like selecting specific columns, filtering rows by condition, uh, grouping, grouping across factors for group level analyses, uh, things like that. So without further ado, let's uh, hop in here. So I'm going to start by just uh, importing the pandas package. If you don't already have it, you'll have to do a pip install. So import, we'll say import pandas and we'll shorten it to pd. So import pandas as pd. The next thing that we're going to do is just read data in. I've got a CSV file. I'm using uh, Atom, by the way, as a te text editor. Um, and I'm just going to be running this inside of my command window here. So uh, the first thing that we're going to do is load the data in. I've got data here in this uh, subfolder called data. And it's just data. Uh, it's a CSV file that contains weather data, um, high temperatures, low temperatures for every day of the year of 2019 for multiple cities. Uh, so we are going to read that file in. It's very easy to do this in Pandas. We're going to say uh, data is equal to um, pd.readcsv. And then we are going to pull in uh, the path and the name of that file, which is city weather 2019. dot csv okay so that's going to pull that in oops we've got kite here csv okay uh, so once that loads let's just go ahead and uh, view some of the data so we'll say print uh, data dot head and we'll call in the first five rows so head is going to pull in um, the first n number of observations or the first n rows. So I put five in here, it's going to pull in uh, the first five rows. Let's save that. I will come into my command prompt and I will just go ahead and say data wrangle.py. That's what I've named this file and run it. And so there we go. So you can see that we've got uh, the first five rows, rows zero through four. Um, and it's got things like the city, the weekday, the date, uh, the temperature low, temperature high, and the time. And we've got uh, multiple time points. And you can say we have a bunch of NA columns as well. Those NAs are there because of the way that I uh, scraped this data. Okay, the other thing that we could do instead of looking at the head is we could look at... Uh, data column headers and we can do that by just saying uh, data dot columns All right so let's go ahead and comment out the uh, data dot head here we'll save this and we'll print out the columns so I'm going to just run the same same code here except instead of the head we're gonna pull out the columns and this is going to print a uh, oh no it's not index object is not callable so what have we done here? Print data dot columns. There we go. So I put columns uh, and I included some parentheses. We don't need those parentheses. And column is going to give us, as you can see, a uh, list of all of the column headers right there. All right, so let's go ahead and clear this out. Uh, the other thing that we could do instead of getting the columns is we could get, uh, for example, the shape of it. So we could say print uh, data dot shape. Uh, this will give us the number of rows and the number of columns inside of data. We could also um, do dot info, and this would give us uh, each column, uh, it would give us pro basically property information about each column. So it would give us, uh, I think, number of observations. What else will it give us? I think it's the data type, things like that. So let's go ahead and 
run uh, shape and info, get an idea of what that looks like. Ah, so I did this again. So you don't need these parentheses here. Uh, you do need one on the end of print though. So let's save that. Run it again. And there you have it. So you can see that top one is, uh, the top one is giving us uh, the, the, uh, number of rows and the number of columns. So this is 730 uh, by 23. And then uh, data.info is just actually giving us uh, all of the data itself, right? Okay, so these are just a few of the ways that you can quickly load data in and kind of look at your data while you're messing with it. Things like R have uh, a, like kind of a built-in visual where you can click on the data frame and it opens up and it looks similar to CSVs or Excel. Uh, this is a little bit more difficult because you have to kind of keep track inside your, in, in your mind what the data looks like. You don't uh, get that visual all the time. So you, what I like to do is I like to print into the command window. Um, you could also just save into a new CSV and uh, just periodically check the CSV to make sure it's doing what you want it to do. Okay, the next thing that I'm gonna go through is how to look at data from a uh, specified column. And the way that we're gonna do this is we're going to say, um, let's comment these print statements out. So if I wanted to say, let's say I wanted to view uh, all of the data, so every row in the column city. So I wanted to see, you know, uh, basically just one column. I could call print and I would, inside of this print, I would call data and then I could use brackets and just call in the name of the column or the column header, right? So I could just say data city. And let's take a look at what that does. So let's go ahead and clear this out first, run our code. And you can see here, it's giving us just one column and it's just the city. And so we've got 730 rows, uh, Birmingham and Cleveland are the two cities there, right? And you can also see down here, it gives you the, uh, the name of the column, the length of the column, and the data type, which in this case is an object. Uh, you could also call specific uh, row numbers from this. So if you wanted, let's say, uh, the first 10 rows, you would say um, columns 0 to 10. Save that. And now instead of giving us the full uh the full column, it's just gonna give us again, rows zero through uh, nine. Notice that I put zero through 10, but 10 is actually going to be, zero will be the start, 10 will actually be the first one not included when it is um, called, All right? So that's, I guess, an important thing to know. So let's clear that. All right, so that's how you would uh, grab a specific column. Uh, you might wanna drop unwanted columns. So you'll remember when we did column heads, you saw that I had a bunch of columns that just had NAs, and that's uh, simply because I scraped it that way. If I wanted to uh, maintain my data structure, my data frame, and drop those, I could call data.drop. And inside of data.drop, I could call in columns to drop, and I'm gonna add a list of columns those columns were just NA1, NA2, all the way out until NA8. So uh, what I'll do here is I will just copy and paste these a couple times. So this would be two, four, six, eight. And then I will uh, go through here and just update the numbers. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And then I will uh, go ahead and print data dot columns again. And so hopefully when this prints data dot columns, we'll see that those NA columns are gone. So let's go ahead and run this. And there you can see it, right? So now we don't have those NA columns inside of our data frame. So that's very simple way to just drop those columns. So let's comment this out. Actually, let's keep this one uncommented. So our data here um, still maintains its form without those 
NAs. The other thing you can do is grab uh, specific columns by their column headers. And to do that, you can just say uh, data will be equal to data. And then you probably have guessed it. You're just going to pass in the city names or the uh, column names rather. But uh, because we want to keep multiple columns, we're going to have to pass this into uh, this as a list. So we'll need double brackets. So let's say that we wanted to keep um, the city column, the weekday column, the, uh, let's say, date. And then let's say we just wanted to take all of the high temperatures. So we've got temp high 1 temp high two. I think there's three of these. Yeah, temp high three. And then temp high four. So let's say uh, we just wanted to take all of these and then we'll do the same thing that we did up there. We'll say print data dot columns. Okay, so we'll save that and run it. And now we should just have the, uh, yeah, the high temperatures there, right? So that's a very easy way to just uh, select by column headers. You could also select by the column numbers, um, but as you start to move your data frame around, you gotta be careful with that. Uh, I prefer to stick just to calling the column headers, uh, just as a little bit clearer for me and uh, a bit safer, um, especially as you start to Kind of alter the form of your data frame. So let's go ahead and clear this. Okay, so now that we have these uh, these columns, um, what else can we start doing? We can start uh, subsetting the rows. So we've subset the, the columns of a data frame. We can also subset the rows, and we can do this by integer location. So we can say, oh, we want the first row, which would be row zero, or oh, we want uh, zero through 10, something like that. That's very easy. You can use an iloc function. So you could say um, print data, and then inside of data, you, you, or not inside of data rather, but you say data.iloc. This is integer location. And inside of integer location, you are going to specify the rows that you want. So if we said zero, that is gonna give you the first row of your data frame. We'll say uh, zero through 20. Keep in mind that 20 is the first one that'll be left out. So this is gonna give us rows zero through 19. Um, let's go ahead and comment out this print data.columns. Let's pull up our, I think we gotta save this first then pull up our command prompt and run our script. And there you have it. So again, it's indices zero through 19 and it's giving us Again, just those uh, columns that we um, selected, right? Okay, uh, so you can easily grab rows by uh, their integer location. So let's go ahead and comment that out. And in just a moment, I'll go through and tell you how to find rows based on conditionals, conditional statements rather than integer locations. Let's see, add a column with values based on operations across other columns. So let's say we have our um, High temperatures, these are throughout four times across the day. So I think it's like 6 a.m., noon, 6 p.m., 12 a.m., or midnight. And so let's say I wanted to add a column at the end of this data frame called average high temperature or temp average high or something like that, um, where you take temp high one plus temp high two plus temp high three plus temp high four divided by four. So you get the average um, temperature. Well, it's very easy. You just say data, you call your data frame, and then you say um, temp, we'll say high, and then AVG for average. So you say, you specify what you want the column's name to be. And then uh, you can add in all of the columns that you wanna sum across. So this will be data where, this will be data and then you'll just call in so temp high one, and then notice that these are inside of parentheses. What I'm gonna do is just copy and paste this. So that would be temp high two, temp high three, 
tempi3, tempi4. Uh, so let's go right here and change this to 2. Change this to, to 3. And change this to 4. Ah. And because we've got 4 of those, we're going to divide it by 4. So let's save that. And then let's come down here and let's uh, print the let's print data head we'll take the uh, first let's just say 10 uh, 10 rows okay so let's go ahead and run this and there you have it so now you can see uh, we've got this added column here at the end temp high average and it is going to be the average across each of these columns for each row right so you can go ahead and clear that out so you could do this uh, you know you could do it this way there's also different things that you do you could sum across all of them uh, you could basically the point I'm trying to make here is it's, it's really quite easy to add a column and then um, populate it with values that are uh, reliant or rely on data from other columns inside of the data frame okay let's see what's next here filter rows on conditional statements so it's quite easy. Um, it's actually very similar to R. Uh, uh, it's very similar to R's filter function in the tidyverse. So let's say that we wanted to. Uh, you know, we've got this data frame called data. It's got uh, it's like 760 rows or something, and each row has the name of a city. Now I know just because I, you know, made this data frame that the two cities in here are Birmingham and Cleveland. Let's say I wanted to take just the data where the city is equal to Birmingham, and we will call it BHM uh, data, and we'll set it equal to data.loc, and inside of .loc, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say where data column city is equal to Birmingham, right? And that is going to give us just the rows where this, the city column has Birmingham inside of it. So we'll come down here and we will say print uh, Bham data, and we'll just say print, uh, actually, let's just do print all so you can see down at the end that there's no more, um, no more Cleveland. And let's go ahead and comment this out here. All right, so let's run this. And there you see it. So now you can see we've got 364 rows, or actually 365, because it's 0 through 364. So again, that's uh, one row per day. You can see that we still have this temp high average, because before we created BHAM data, we um, added that column to the data frame data. So you can see that we filtered out all of the rows where city name is equal to uh, Cleveland. Uh, you can uh, also filter by multiple things. So you could, instead of saying BHAM data is just equal to um, data city, you could also, inside of the data loc, uh, call other conditionals. So you could say, let's say you wanted data uh, city equals, is equal to Birmingham and also uh, data, um, let's see, what did we call this? Let's say we, we only wanted the days where the temperature was greater than 70 degrees. You would say, uh, data is equal to and and city of Birmingham temperature average high temperature greater than 70 you would say temp high average greater than 70 right now uh, one thing that you have to keep in mind in this loc is that your conditions have to be separated with parentheses uh, I forget to do this quite often, so make sure that you remember to do that. So let's go ahead and save this. And now we shouldn't get 365 uh, rows of data because, well, unfortunately, uh, it is not over 70 degrees every day here at Birmingham. So let's run this again and see what we get. And so you can see here now that you've got uh, not 365. You can see actually up until 36. And so the day where the average is over 70 for the first time of the year 2019 is February 6th. That's still pretty good, right? Uh, February 6th, yes. That's, that's, having average temperature over 70 in February is uh, obviously it's quite nice.
Okay, so let's see what else we can do. Add column with values based on uh, conditionals. Okay, so let's say that we wanted to keep our our uh, first data frame here. So let's comment out BHAM data and uh, this print. So we've got data. Let's say we wanted to add a column where if the average temperature is greater than 70, we're going to label it hot. And if it's less than 70, we're going to label it as cold. It's really quite easy. What we do is we would say um, data a, uh, data because it's in place, we'll say data.loc where data, uh, what would we call this? Temp high average is if it's greater than 70, we want it to, uh, we want to describe it as hot. Right? And then, uh, what we have to do is say um, basically the same thing, data.loc, and then inside of that we'll say, we'll call the same arguments, or rather we'll pass the same information into it, data high. Now instead of greater than 70, we'll say less than 70, and we will say that that is equal to uh, cold. Right? And then we will print this. So we'll print data dot head. And we'll call the first, uh, let's say 10 rows. So let's save that and run it. Oh, we're getting a trace back. Type error, string and integer. Oh, I see what we have to do. So we have to call in uh, data loc. Oh, I think we have to pass in here a uh, the name of the new column. So we'll say um, description. Yeah, so you have to pass in the name of the new column after that, and then you can see here you've got description off to the side. Now we're just looking at the first, uh, the first ten rows, and so uh, you know these are all in January, and so they're all equal to cold. But if we were to go down further, we would get some equal to uh, to hot. Okay, well, uh, before we do group by, let's go ahead and uh, clear this out. The last thing that I'm going to go through before we uh, go into just basically if you made all these changes and then you want to save it to a CSV, uh, you would do that down here. The last thing I'm going to touch on before we go into any of that, let's move this up, give ourselves some room, is the group by function. So you would use group by, if you saw, saw my R video, you would use group by to collapse things across different factors of, of whatever column that you choose. Um, it's very similar here. Instead of running any kind of uh, analysis, I'm just going to print out some um, basic basic statistics here. So what I'll do is I'll say um, print, and inside of print, what we're going to do is we're going to call in data, and we're going to say group by, uh, group by, and we're going to group by, let's just say city. So remember, we've got um, Birmingham and Cleveland here. And we want to, let's say we wanted to know what the average temperatures were, or uh, all basically just all of the columns that we had across the two cities. And what we can do is we can say describe. And what describe is going to do is it's going to give us basic statistics. It's going to give us things like means, standard deviations, um, and all of that. Uh, you know, min, max. Well, let's just save it and uh, let's run this and have a look at it. Okay, so what you can see here is we've got um, Birmingham, and uh, you can just and then Cleveland, and you can see there's the count 365. There's uh, apparently a row missing here in Cleveland. I'm not sure why that is, and then you can see mean, standard deviation, and all of that uh, stuff for each of the temp high one, temp high two, 
temp i4 and then over here is the temp i average you can see the counts you can see the means standard deviations and so on so it's a uh, very easy way to just do a quick group by you can also group by multiple things so you can group by uh, uh, both city and weekday because there's going to be two of them it has to be passed in as a list so let's say we want to group by city and uh, I believe the column's name is weekday. We can do that as well. It's gonna give us uh, perhaps a strange looking output, but uh, here it is. So you can see tempi one. It's the, kind of the same setup here, tempi one, tempi two, tempi four, three is in where these dots would be. And then uh, the average, and then along the other axis here, you've got Monday, uh, through Sunday. They're a bit out of order. They're not Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on and so forth, but you can see they're all here. And then you can see it also separates out um, Birmingham and Cleveland. Right? So that's a very easy way to just quickly get a glimpse at group by um, grouped, grouped data, right? Using the group by and the describe. Okay, so the last thing that I want to do, uh, let's comment out this print statement, is just save our new data so you'll remember you know we went through we dropped some some columns we uh, added this average column and then we also added this description column so let's say we wanted to save this uh, new altered data frame what we would do is we would say data dot two CSV and then within two CSV what we would do is we would um, give it a name so we would let's just call it new data dot CSV and um, by default, the 2CSV takes the first column of your data frame or it adds a column to the beginning of your data frame with the index. You can uh, drop that column by setting index equal to false. Um, otherwise, you're going to get a new column added onto the front of your data frame with just basically one through the length of your data. All right, so let's go ahead and run this. And we should see our file populate over here. Right, there you have it. So it did populate and we can uh, open that up and take a look at it. And there you have it, right? So we see we have this description. We also have the average high temperature. Um, and so we know that it's saved correctly. Okay, that's uh, the last thing that I have, and this video is running kind of long already. This is just a very brief, short introduction into uh, um, Pandas and, and Python. This is a very powerful package. If you're doing any kind of data analysis, this is a great way to help clean the data up before the analysis. And then obviously you can get into things like NumPy and uh, Seaborn and Matplotlib, things like that, to visualize and actually start running some analyses. Uh, so I liken this to R's tidyverse. Um, I like both of them. They both do pretty well. Uh, I, I tend to prefer Python a bit over R, just kind of stylistically. I like it. Uh, it writes a bit easier in my opinion, but both are very, very cool. All right, if you like this, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Uh, hit the like button below. You can also check me out on Twitter. I post a lot of my code up on GitHub, so go check it out there. You can also find me on LinkedIn, and you can find my academic work on ResearchGate. All right, until next time, keep coding.